Hello, my friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. In this video, I'm gonna explain what the DAW is, the basic functionality that pretty much all DAWs have. I'm also gonna get into a little bit of additional functionality, which some DAWs have and some DAWs don't. But this video is not gonna go into detail about all the different DAWs that are out there and which one is best for you. This video is more of an overview about all of the DAWs because they all perform the same basic functions and have the same basic workflow. First off, a little bit of terminology. The DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation. There's a few different meanings of this and the the actual definition is a little different than the way it's commonly used. So I'm just gonna explain both a little bit. The actual definition is it's, well, it's your digital audio workstation. It's your entire setup with your audio interface, your computer, your software, everything. But in common conversation, that's not how people use the word DAW. It more specifically refers to which recording program, which software you're using. Now, the specific software that I use is Logic Pro, but there's like, I don't know, maybe a dozen mainstream programs that all work very well. Um, other popular ones is like, well, Pro Tools is quite popular. It's an industry standard among professionals. And then some of the lower cost options, um, Reaper is fairly inexpensive. It's like 60 bucks. Cakewalk by BandLab is by donation. So you could pay whatever you want for that. Now, the basic purpose of the DAW is to capture audio and streamline the audio editing and mastering process. So you can capture multiple tracks of audio and edit them. You can cut copy, paste, move stuff around, and also add effects such as EQ, compression, reverb, and converge all of that together into a single output and that's your final song. So different DAWs have different workflows, but they all have the same basic functionality. You have your individual tracks, which will play back one source of audio, whatever that is. It could be an audio track, it could be something that you recorded, it could be an audio track that you imported from somewhere else and just brought it into the project. It can be a MIDI track, which would be like a software instrument, so that as you play the keyboard, it's triggering the sounds that are on your computer, and it's just like playing any other keyboard. And the sounds could also be loops, which could be like, say, drum loops, or loops you got from a website such as Splice.com, or a lot of DAWs come with a library full of loops, and you're allowed to just put them in your songs as much as you want. So the layout, the signal flow within any DAW basically looks like this. It starts with the individual tracks. Like I said, these can be audio tracks, MIDI tracks, or loops, or anything that makes sound. And the sound from these individual tracks all converge together to the master output. Now you can put any processing you have available, such as EQ or compression, on these individual tracks, and you can also put that kind of processing on the master output. So when you put the processing, like say an EQ, on the individual track, then that EQ will only affect the sound coming from that track. But if you put the EQ on the master output bus, then that EQ is going to affect the combination of all of those tracks together. And when you put processing on the master bus, sometimes it could be called master bus processing or mastering process, because you've heard of mastering, right? Well, that's basically what mastering is. It's the processing that's applied to the master bus that affects the entire song as a whole. Now, each individual track, yeah, it gets sent to the master bus, but it can also have an additional output called an aux bus. This is an exact duplicate of the main track's output and it provides the ability to apply parallel processing that doesn't affect the track's main output. For instance, I normally use these for adding reverb. The original sound comes from the track, but I've put a reverb effect on the auxiliary bus, which then goes to the master output. So with this, I can dial in the reverb without affecting the rest of the track. Here's how it sounds. And also each track will have the ability to be muted, soloed, and panned to the left or right, as well as a master volume. Most DAWs also include what's called virtual instruments. This uses MIDI to trigger the sound of an instrument, and it can be any instrument. A piano is quite common, but it could be like a violin, a cello, a trumpet, saxophone, you name it. There are virtual instrument sounds for pretty much everything. And that's where you have your keyboard laid out and you just play the keyboard, but it makes the sound of that instrument. And as you play the instrument, you can play it along to the entire song and you hear yourself playing the instrument in real time without any latency. If you are getting latency, then something's not set up properly. And as you play these virtual instruments, it captures your performance as MIDI. So MIDI basically just records 
which note is played, how hard you hit the note, and how long you held it for. It doesn't actually record any sounds. There is no audio within MIDI information. The MIDI information triggers the audio. So you can take a MIDI recording and use that to trigger the sound of any software instrument. So if it was played on a piano sound, you can take that MIDI file to trigger a violin sound or trumpet sounds. Now most DAWs come with really great MIDI editing tools. The only DAWs that don't come with good MIDI editing are some of the free ones. Any DAW that you have to pay for does come with excellent MIDI editing capabilities. So if you played a wrong note, you can change it or you can make the notes longer or you can even just program an entire part in one note at a time. If you want to learn more about recording with MIDI, check out Lesson 36. Now some DAWs come with a library full of loops. These are pre-recorded audio tracks that you can just drag and drop and incorporate them into your song. It's quite common to use loops for drums, for instance. Some DAWs and some websites even can provide a large selection of drum loops and you just drag and drop them into your song and use them however you like. And of course, the DAW facilitates actual audio recording. So you can instantiate an audio track, hit the record button, and it will capture the sound of the incoming audio. Now I want to point out that there is no difference in sound quality between all of the different DAWs. The DAW is just a container that holds the sound. It doesn't manipulate the sound unless you do something to intentionally manipulate the sound, such as instantiate an effects plugin. Now once you start using the effects, then yes, the DAW does affect the sound. But it's very minor and there's not a big difference in the sound quality of the plugins between various DAWs. There is a difference, it's just not a huge difference. What the main differences are between the DAWs is the workflow. How quick and convenient it is to perform certain tasks, mostly for editing, but also the capability of those tasks. Some DAWs incorporate advanced features for audio recording and editing that other DAWs maybe don't. So whichever DAW you choose, it's really not that crucial of a difference because the main factor that's gonna affect the sound of your music is your abilities, your talent, not the DAW. You can make fantastic sounding recordings with literally any DAW out there. Now, as I mentioned, there is a small difference in the quality of the plugins available in each DAW. It's not a huge difference, but that doesn't matter anyways because all of the DAWs can accept third-party plugins. And as for myself, my most commonly used plugins, I've got third-party plugins for those tasks, such as EQ, compression, reverb. I just like the third-party plugins better, so regardless which DAW you're using, you have access to all the same plugins anyways. If you want to learn more about third-party plugins, check out Lesson 27. That's what it's all about. Now, I don't want to get carried away here in recommending DAWs, but there's a couple that I would recommend in certain situations. Now, first off, if you're using a Mac computer, then there's two DAWs that I would recommend at different price points. First off is GarageBand. It is free, it comes with every Mac, and it is very functional. Here's an example, a client of mine produced this entire song on GarageBand. So like I said, it's got more to do with your abilities than the DAW itself. Now if you want to spend money on a DAW and you're on a Mac, Logic Pro. It's one of the most capable DAWs out there in terms of like functionality and editing capabilities and streamlined workflow. It's top notch and much lower cost than any of the other DAWs that have similar functionality. For instance, Pro Tools costs like $1,000 a year and there's nothing Pro Tools can do that Logic can't. Logic is a one-time purchase of like 200 bucks. If you're not on a Mac, you're on a PC, then I don't really have a strong recommendation. They're very competitive with each other, but um, there's a couple that do stand out to me in the lower price category. For instance, Cakewalk by BandLab is by donation, so you can pay whatever you want for it. Also, Reaper is very good, it's only $60. And then FL Studio used to be called Fruity Loop Studio. I know of a few professional songwriters who use this software and I've heard the results, so it seems to work pretty good. As well as Propellerhead's Reason. Those are just a few, there's many more out there. And in my opinion, I wouldn't really say one is better than another for its price. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. And if you wanna learn more, check out my other videos. This is part of an entire audio engineering course. And also make sure you subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.